Okay, guys. Here we go. I am going to try to do a little weapon shot. Um, before I have to go and do some real stuff. Um, I'm off this week again. So I figured I would work on my myths and legends while we did a little weapon shot. Um, I use my variegated floss like a blend instead of doing it fully variegated so um i didn't know how to work with variegated floss so i looked on al forest embroidery because i had seen that they have um if you order their kit you get a paper that tells you how to different ways that you can stitch with variegated floss and one of the ways is to do it as a blend and what you do is you take a strand from two different one strand from two different six strand flosses and then you put them together so what i do is like this is my flower silk persephone's pomegranate i have it cut to the length um and then what i do is i take like one strand of this pinky color and then one strand of this purpley color. See, there's one loop that's purple, one loop that's pink. I take one of each, then I line them up and see which, what it's gonna look like when it's next to each other. Cause I don't want the colors to be, you know, too much the same. So if it's too much the same, I turn it around and use like I tried the other way and see how it works. So this one lined up pretty good. It's got white on one strand and purple on the other. Then it's got pink and white. And then it's got purple and pink. And then it's got white and purple. And then white and pink. So it's a pretty good combination. And they're not going to blend in and end up with a big stripe. Like if you look here, I kind of have a dark stripe here. But it's okay. So, I'm going to get up and I'm going to close my bedroom door. I'll be right back. Okay. So, my setup is pretty simple. I haven't really sat on the floor to do this in a while. So, this is going to be interesting. But this is my Lowry stand. This is my one of my arabesca frames. Um, this is, I think I got this from Vintage Needle Arts, this fabric. I can't remember what they called it, but it's just a printed one. And um, if you get from Hobby Lobby, the little pack of Ada, it's called like Vintage something. Um, and it's the Artiste brand. It's literally the same exact thing. But this is 18 count. Um, these are the threads of myth and legend from Stitchy Box Flower Silk. Um, so I have five different colors that I'm using for this pattern. And then I'm using my little tin that I made myself a project holder. It's a Ginger Singer, Ginger scissor box that I got at a thrift store. It didn't have any scissors in it. And I put self stick um, felt on the bottom. And then I put one of my needle miner magnets, one on each side. So that holds my scissors. And then I can throw my ring on there and it holds it. Um, and then a long time ago, I put one of these horrible little needle threaders on a magnet. But then I got this one from Fat Quarter Shop. And it is specifically for embroidery needles. Um, so where the wire kind when you thread you put it through 
but then you pull the thread like this through the needle so it's harder to do. Well, this one, you put it through the needle and your thread goes like this and pulls through the needle so it's easier. I don't know. It was a little expensive, but I really like it. I need to put a magnet on it so I can keep track of it. <laughs> um, and then these scissors are just ones that came in the little sewing kit that they have at Hobby Lobby that's like, um, it's got a bee on it and it comes with some needles and it came with these little scissors and they're actually pretty good. So those are my little travel ones because those are the ones that if I lose them, it's not that big of a deal. But on my Lowry stand, I keep my really nice DMC scissors. These are my favorite. But since I haven't used my Lowry stand in a while, I haven't used those in a while. And I just have those on a retractable, um, like, badge reel. Um, so let's go. Um, I haven't worked on this project in, uh, like two weeks. Because I've been working on Maggie's name. And I just almost unthreaded my needle. <laughs> um, so when I start, I, uh, when I start a thread, I use Adam Hart cross stitches. Uh, she called it the alternative loop start. So I go down. Okay. So I go down at the top of my cross and then come up where I want my first leg to go down, if that makes sense. And then I pull it until I get my tail and I hold on each side of it. And I go back where I just came up because that's where my first leg is going to go down. And then I get like that. And then I come up where I normally start my first leg and put that loop around it. And then I pull it tight. And I kind of guide it like this. And then you go back down. And then there's your first leg. She clips this right now. I wait until I'm a couple, like, <laughs> I wanna make sure that's secure. So I make my first stitch at least before I clip that. And then I can just go about my business. Um, she said she did not come up with this. It's just something she learned, but that's what I always use now. I learned a lot of stuff from her on TikTok. I didn't get on TikTok for the longest time because I thought it was just, you know, silly stuff for kids. And then I found out that there's crafty stuff and I was hooked. So there's crafty stuff that I watch. There's some comedians that I watch. Um, watch all sorts of stuff on there that I just didn't know was a thing. So for a few weeks, I was on TikTok all the time watching. I put up a couple little TikToks myself, but nothing big. Now this one, since I am doing this variegated, I am going all the way up and all the way down, and then all the way up and all the way down. So this one, if you look, this is the middle row of the Harris Peacock. So what I did was I went up and down for the middle of the diamonds, and then when I did these outside diamonds, I went back and forth. So my variegation is different. And then I, my plan for the rest of it is each color set, I'm gonna go the other way. So this color set, I'm going all up and down. And then when I get to the next one down, I'll go across each diamond. So it gives it a little extra something. I don't know, I just thought it would be kind of cool give you a little more to look at when it's done. 
but um don't really actually have a lot to talk about just figured I would give this a try and then um at the end I can when I decide I'm done stitching for a while I can show you my setup and then show you what I how I normally stitch this is how I used to stitch all the time. I'd sit on the floor and I would just have my lower stand all the way down. Um, but now, since I do a lot of stitching at lunch at work and on break at work, we have a couch in the break room and so I sit on the couch and I, um, I sit on the right hand side of the couch. So I have like, like here's the couch. So I sit down here and then I have, like I put my tablet next to me and I generally have my phone playing YouTube videos sitting on the armrest of the couch. And then I can kind of hold my frame on the armrest. So I balance it on like my stomach while I'm sitting there and on the armrest of the couch. But since I do that on break and for my hour long lunch, I've gotten really used to stitching that way. And then after work, if I have time, if I don't have other things to do, I sit in my car and I kind of have a setup for my car. I can take a quick video of that too. Actually, I have two setups in my car now. I had, for the winter time, I would sit in the front, in the passenger seat. But now, in the spring and summer, since it's cooler, I set up a seat in the back for myself. Like in the trunk of my SUV. Um, so that's kind of silly. I'll show you that too. got to cross this one last time okay so that is the end of that one mark those off um so uh, got a loop Um, so I really like these flower silks. I do try to use the whole entire strand. I have, I'm not bending over into the, um, thing. Um, I try to use as much as I can. So I do play, uh, thread chicken quite a bit. Oh, I shouldn't even bother crossing that yet. Because I gotta come all the way down anyway. Duh. Uh, that's up one. So, now that I've finished that whole line. There we go. Um, so yeah, I find myself playing thread chicken quite a bit with this because I don't um, I don't really do much with the measuring on this thread like I don't do it the same way I do DMC um, just because the way these come they're a pretty decent length I mean they're not as long as I normally do but um, so they come like this and this is, I don't know. Oh, no, it's over there. I don't know. It's like six inches, eight inches maybe. So all I do is untwist that and then use this loop to be the loop that goes up here. And then I just cut the ends. So it's like... Seventeen. 
I don't I don't do the whole length like um, let's see give me one give me one okay so the DMC it is about the same eh, so the DMC is the brown and the flower silks so it's a few inches shorter So it's a little shorter than I'm used to, basically, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> that was a long way of saying that. So I do want it to last. Plus, if you've got a good variegation, you don't want to mess it up. Um, so I, I do try to get as much out of the thread as I can. And... Um, if I find like this one, this color has a white section in the variegation. And sometimes you get where the white on both of your strands comes in the same spot. And that's a little annoying. So I will try to get it so it doesn't do that. But boy, I am having trouble seeing the holes because I'm not used to stitching this way. Oh, um, so what else? So for Mother's Day, I built the swing set for Maggie. She got it for her birthday. My mom's friends, Jane and Russ, have been wanting to get her a swing set since last year. And we kept debating and saying, you know, we don't know, it's so big, and well, the past month or two, we've, yes, we had pretty much decided we were, we wanted the swing set, but then it was like, we don't want, it's a lot of money, if they would even just pay for part of the swing set, like, I was willing to pretty much do it with my tax money like screw it I don't want it to be a big deal I don't want them spending a bunch of money and having that be an issue but they love Maggie and they don't have any kids so they love Maggie like their kid and they're going no 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 it's something we really want to do so they did it so I spent all last weekend putting it together, and it's amazing. But, you know, she doesn't really have anyone to play with. <laughs> so that's kind of sad. Um, so yesterday, we had her cousin come over and play. Her cousin, I think Brighton is seven. And Maggie just turned five. So... There is a little bit of an age issue. Like Maggie was trying so hard to be more grown up. Trying so hard. And uh, Brighton was getting bored because, you know, it's just a swing set. You can't play with that all day. <laughs> so Brighton was getting bored. They'd come in a couple times in the house, played with dolls. They'd go back outside. And uh, so we finally got out the little water thing, the sprinkler thing, um, which I, my stepmom got for Ma Oh, wrong one. My stepmom got for Maggie, I don't know, for her birthday last year, maybe. Um, and it's like a sit and spin, but it shoots water out of the middle of it. So we got that out, but first we had to figure out what Brighton was going to wear because she didn't bring any extra clothes. We didn't know we were going to do water stuff. So over there. Yes, there it is. Uh, 
Um, so she didn't, like, we had no idea we were going to do anything with water. So she didn't bring any clothes. So I'm like, well, let's see. Maybe you can wear, like, a t-shirt of mine or something. So she did. She wore one of my old t-shirts and her, the shorts she was wearing. So, I mean... Her shirts, her, her shorts were wet, but she was okay with that. <laughs> she's like, she just wanted to have some fun with the water. Because we asked her, well, what do you do when you get bored at home? Because they've got um, a trampoline, but... Erg. I think that's good. I think I got the loop out, but now it's stuck somewhere else. Um... So she's like, well, we would play in the water or whatever. I'm like, okay, well, let's see. What can we do? Because obviously Maggie's a lot smaller because she's only five. So she's not like she can borrow one of Maggie's swimsuits. What did I do? What is going on? Okay, there we go. Is that it? No, no, it's not. What the? It must have been on the other line. <laughs> um, so, came upstairs, looked through my closet, see if I had, like, something she could wear. So she just wore one of my old t-shirts. Um, it worked out, I guess. I mean... Let's see if that is this loop. Is coming from see that feels like that's it, but then it's not. Okay, did that get it? I feel like that got it. Oh, jeez. Pain in the butt. Yep, that got it. Okay. So, we found her a shirt to wear. She just wore her shorts, got soaking wet. They had a blast. Um, it was an annoying knot. Um, and then it's like, they'd go over and go on the swing set and it's like the water's still running and then it's like <laughs> water's not free are you done are you done playing in the water no no we're still playing in the water don't turn it off don't turn it off oh my god it was such a headache <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow i missed some that's fine it's fine it's cool we got it um, I missed the ones down here. Two up. Wow, I'm not doing good with this. All these mistakes already. Um, it's fine. It'll all blend. Oop, and you're not even seeing what I'm doing. Um, so, it was fun. We had, I had stopped at Walmart on the way to pick up Brighton. And, uh, got the cheesy garlic breadsticks. It's like, in the, like, with the take and bake pizzas. Where they're already cooked, you just heat them up. Um, so, we got that for lunch. And when, as soon as we got here, I started cooking it because, I mean, it was like 11.30, 12 o'clock by the time we got here. And uh, I was like, okay, well, the food's ready for lunch. And Maggie had two pieces. Well, she had one piece. 
and Brighton had watermelon. She didn't want any of the cheesy garlic bread stuff. Or it's just like cheese pizza, just without sauce. Um, she didn't want any of that. Okay, well, she had watermelon. I had a bag of Doritos that they split. They ate most of it. Although, while I was cooking, I kept going back and eating and eating and eating and eating and eating the Doritos. Anytime I would walk past, I had to grab <laughs> grab some. It was horrible. I'm supposed to be on a diet. Um... And then, you know, we finally said it was time for the water to be done after a while. And then it's like, okay, well, what are we going to do? Um, and mom's like, was well, she staying for dinner? And I said, well, I think so. I think she's just staying all day. So then what did she want for dinner? Pizza. <laughs> so we had pizza for dinner. <laughs> So I had so much pizza and breadsticks and stuff I'm not supposed to have. Well, I just had too many calories. Not really. I can have whatever I want as long as I watch my portions. Um, so I just ate way too much. But it was fun. And then we went to drop her back off after dinner. and She didn't want to go home. She wanted to stay. I'm like, but you said you're bored. Yeah, but my brothers are annoying. <laughs> and Maggie didn't want her to go. Maggie wanted her to stay. So we went over there and hung out there for a little while. And uh, then we came home. And my sister-in-law is 30-something. 32? 31? 30? I don't know. I think she's 30. Um, and it was just crazy. It's always crazy in that house. She's got four kids. Um, so I was like, you know what, Weisha? <laughs> I'm going to leave Maggie here and you can come and have a sleepover at my house. And she's like, okay, let's go. <laughs> oh, but no, she didn't come home with us. We came home. Maggie, I don't know how she was not asleep in the car when we got here. We're like on our almost home. And I'm like, why are you still awake? She was just talking and talking. And uh, I'm like, go to sleep. She was so tired. But she would not admit that she was tired. Ugh. It was silly. But eventually she fell asleep. And then it's like, I should get on the treadmill. But I was, I was exhausted. <laughs> I didn't even do that much, I don't think. But I was exhausted. So I did not get on the treadmill. So I did not lose weight <laughs> yesterday. Um, oh well, what are you going to do? Um, so let's see. We're at half an hour already. I'm going to try to finish this apple, and then that'll be the end of this little thingy. So one up from that. Three spaces, yep. I don't like that there are two big sections next to each other. Like this three-part diamond, and then this is a three-part diamond. Like three diamond part, and then this is a three diamond part. But I didn't want to change it again. So. But also the weird thing with this is, so this side has two sets of these apples and then this side has two sets of flowers so what I'm going to do is do one set of flowers one set of apples one set of flowers one set of apples I think that's just going to be the best looking way to do it
I know that's kind of random, but it feels like there's still a knot there. Oh well, too late now. <sighs> One there. Oh, and then I gotta do. Oh, those guys will be on the next row. And um, when it starts to get too twisted, I just roll the needle in my hand to untwist it. That's where I get my tarnishing. When I get tarnishing. It's from twisting the needle. Um... So what I should be working on is one of my restarts. But I figured that'd be, this is nice because it's one color and I don't have to do color changing for a video. I figured this would be a good one. Um, I would be working on Maggie's name, the floral thing, but I can't use my Lowry stand with that. And yeah, I waste a lot of this thread doing it this way because I'm carrying my threads. But I want to keep my variegation going. It's another reason I play thread chicken so much with this because I know I'm already wasting so much of it. Okay, and there's that one, and then this will be the middle, almost. Um, so this chart, um, each of the points where they come together, there's four stitches. So. What I've decided <laughs> is I'm doing the outlines on the one I'm stitching and then the next one will go inside, but then the outline for that one will be on there. I don't know. Um, so these four stitches here are supposed to be this color, but I'm going to do it the next color. I don't know why. It just That's just how it happened. So I just kept up with it. This chart is supposed to be like 12 colors. It's like I'll stick up a picture. It's supposed to be like a rainbow um, fade like ombre kind of thing but rainbow. So it's supposed to have like 12 colors. So the way they break up where the colors stop and start is a little different than what I wanted because I only have five colors and what I'm doing is one color, one color, one color, one color. So I'm like mirroring my colors. Um, so... Um, I had to kind of fudge the pattern a little bit so I get the color breaks where I want my color breaks. So this is the picture of what it's supposed to be with the rainbow fade thing. And then I have it mapped out where my colors are going to stop and start. Um, and I just figured that'll make it even. That's why I flipped this one. This one was supposed to go this way, this way, this way, and there was going to be another one in here. Well, then that takes away one of the square or one of the diamonds from this next row. So I just flipped it. So the, the block that was supposed to be here is going to go here. And it's going to be in the next color. Which is going to be... 
Hecate's Hounds. It's gonna be this dark color. It's gonna be the next one. And then after that, Demeter's Harvest, which is this like orange and red. And then the outside color is Dionysus Wine. So it's like burgundy and purpley. So that'll be the outside four. Or the outside one, two, three, four, five diamonds. Like on the bottom of the top. But that's a while away because once I finish this band, I have to do this color up here too. But so far this pattern is working well for this. Um, oh, I did do something yesterday. Uh, so I was cleaning my room because I knew Brighton is very nosy. Uh, so I knew she was going to want to come in my room and see my room. Plus I have a fish tank and I wanted her to be come and look at the fish. Um, and I knew Maggie would want her to come and look at the fish. <laughs> um, so I cleaned my room. So I was trying to get stuff cleaned up a little bit. And then I'm like, I had been in the middle of getting floss ready for um, the bluey stitch along. I had got all the floss colors, so I had to get them put on their uh, Annie's Keepers and everything. So I had to get those done. And then I was like, some of those colors... I had in the stash and some of them I had to buy. So the ones that were in my stash, I had to take off of the wooden slats, storage slats. Some of them I had, um, I guess only one of them was on an Annie's Keeper. Yeah. Um, so then I'm like, you know what? I know there's a couple of projects that I have my floss kitted up and ready to go on Annie's Keepers and I don't think I'm going to do those projects. So I unkitted them. And the two that I unkitted were my Quaker tiles from Vibsters. Because I got there's there's two versions of the pattern. There's one where it's like the open tile like this. And then there's one that's the same exact tile, but it's filled in. And I bought, the first one was the open tile. That was the first one I got. And then later I saw that she had the filled in tiles. So I got that pattern too, because I liked it better. But they didn't, of course, use the same colors. Why would they? Because that would be simple. <laughs> and now that I'm doing this, and this is so big, I don't really want to do that one. At least not right now. I might do it later. So I unkitted all those flosses and put them in my stash. And that is where that break is. Ooh, so I could have done this. Oh well. Oh well. Um. Oh, I'm about done to this thread anyway. So I broke those all down put them back in the stash. So I have to update my floss stash list that I have. Let me go ahead and end this. I don't do anything special to end it. I kind of come up between and then run under so I don't have to flip over my project. And then I can just trim that. And it's already buried. So there we go. That thread is done. So I think actually that's where I'm going to stop. I did one thread. Which was 69 stitches. Not bad. Um, so now what I'll do is I will stop the video. And I will get my phone out of here. And I'll show you this setup. And then I'll show you, like, my setup for what I do when I'm on the couch. And then I can show you my crazy little setup in the car. So, stay tuned. Okay, 
so here's the setup for this. It's not really much. It's the Lowry stand, my tablet, um, it's my Arabesca. I have this little needle box, but I haven't really used it in a while since I haven't used my Lowry stand. I keep my Lowry stand, this is almost all the way down. Um, and then I have it decorated. Since I was using it for bigger projects, the Lowry stand is side heavy. Like, because, you know, if the longer your rods, the more it wants to tip this way. So, I just got these ankle weights. Or wrist weights. I don't know. And I put them on there. Um, and then those are all my cool stickers. Um, this is the little setup I showed. So that's it for this. Um, I did make that floor pillow so I could sit on the floor easier and more comfortably, but since I don't really sit on the floor anymore, I put it away. So there we go, that's this part, and then I will show you um, the car. Okay, so here, since it's gotten nice, we're spring slash summer, this is my back seat set up. Uh, I drive a Honda Element, um, so I have a lift gate and a tailgate. So I get in there, I close the tailgate, leave the top open, and I can sit. Got my tablet holder, and then I just sit and stitch back here. This is a dog bed from Walmart. It was like 40 bucks, but that's what I sit on. This is a gift card I found in the parking lot. I need to see if there's anything on it. <laughs> okay, so that's the back seat. I'll be right back. All right. And here is when I sit in the front seat when it's like raining or whatever. Um, I sit in the passenger seat. Like I said, I drive a Honda Element and they're crazy. They don't have, their cup holders are actually on the floor. So I built a cup holder for my Element. And then I attach the selfie stick with a, like a, wiring pipe holder so I have a selfie stick and then I got a tablet holder that can go on a tripod and then I have that on my selfie stick so if I need it to go up higher I can put it up higher I can you know angle it better so and then I put my phone in this little spot so I can watch YouTube or whatever so that's it there we go. Back to the other video. My couch setup is pretty sad. I mean, it's not really anything. <laughs> I put my floss ring in the corner, my tablet, and then this is made with Duplo blocks. That is my cell phone stand. And then I just sit here under the light. I keep my scissors and my floss buddy on the table. There we go. That's it.